Hey everybody, before we get this video started, I just wanted to hop on here to just give you a bit of like a warning, and that is is that this video does ta tackle some um, some serious subjects, including uh, burning sun and also um, self harm and suicide. So, if that's too hard for you to watch, I understand completely. But I wanted to put that in there before we move forward with this video. Okay, thank you. Well, 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 welcome back everybody. I hope that you are excited for today. As for today, we are actually doing a... <laughs> that is uh, my current bubby here. Is a giant Great Dane who is the sweetest boy ever. <laughs> anyway, um, so we're going to be doing our spring break away from K-pop music and focusing more on people and funny moments. And today we are doing the Unreal Life of G-Dragon. So, that's what we're going to be doing. <laughs> I hope you're excited as I am, because I think it will be really fun. CNN Please once please. picked 50 reasons why Seoul is the world's greatest city. There were more side dishes than the main dish, the Korean wave, the fast internet, and one of them was GD. Today's video is about the GD and the human Gwangyeong. Born in 1988, GD was able to develop his talent with the help of his mother, who had helped him to do whatever he wanted to do since childhood. Seeing GD who liked to dance and was full of talent, his mother took him to various auditions. And through this, he appeared in MBC's early childhood education program Popopo at the age of five before entering elementary school. He showed off his talent in the show, and despite his young age, GD showed excellent dance skills. Then he received the attention of Rula, a popular dance group in the 1990s. At that time, Rula was planning to bring together child dancers to make Little Rula, and GD participated in it. From then on, GD accompanied them to concerts across the country, and danced in front of countless people when he was only seven years old. But as time went by, the popularity of the Rula began to wane, and unfortunately the Little Rula was disbanded. Eight-year-old GD was shocked when he heard, there's no Little Rula from tomorrow on and he declared to his mother that he would never be a singer or dancer again. So, little GD who was active on TV and on stage, started a normal life like his friends at the school. But his talent didn't let him go. One day his family took him to a ski resort, he entered a dance competition and won first place. And coincidentally, the MC of that competition was Isu Man, the current CEO of SM Entertainment. Mm. After seeing GD's talent, Isu Man accepted him as a trainee at SM, and like that he worked as an SM trainee with BOA, SES, and Xinhua for five years. However, in 1990, Man did not have a complete system unlike now, so it was not possible to give a clear vision to GD, who was only eight years old. So GD only went to SM once a month to dance because there was nothing useful to do. But after some time, it happened that GD listened to Wu-Tang Clan music at his friend's house when he turned 10 years old. Shocked and impressed by the never-before-heard hip-hop performance, he discovered his love for hip-hop from there. At that time, hip-hop wasn't popular enough in Korea, so there were only a few places to learn about hip-hop. But thanks to his diligence, he finally found an academy where he could learn freestyle rap. And coincidentally, the academy was also the practice room of the Korean hip-hop group, People Crew. The members of People Crew were amazed by the fact that only a 10-year-old boy did come into the academy to participate in rap. The members loved him a lot, so GD was able to learn rap and hip-hop from them. And after three years at 13, he got another great chance. And after three years at 13, he got another great chance. Oh my goodness. At that time, several hip-hop singers gathered together to release an album called 2001 Korea. Huh. And the only 13 years old oh, GD they, featured they the lead song album, and even anyway. released his own song called G-Dragon. <laughs> Thus, a 13-year-old GD received a lot of attention as the youngest rapper in Korea, and this event influenced his future a lot. Because after this, he had a meeting with the CEO of YG Entertainment, Yang Hen Suk. At that time, there were many hip-hop musicians in YG, so Yang Hen Suk immediately contacted his mother as soon as he heard about GD. Later, he recalled his first impression of GD like this. 
There was a little boy rapping like a pro and I was very surprised to see it. I was wondering how can this kid who is just an elementary school student, rap like that and present his facial expressions and style like that. <laughs> <laughs> so Yang Hen Suk met GD and his mother in person for explaining their vision. However, when his mother went outside for a while, Yang Hen Suk said to the 13-year-old GD, You have to convince your mother that you really want this. Even if you have to cry or scream for it, because no matter what, you have to come to YG. As Yang Hen Suk said, GD came home and convinced his mother that he really wanted to join YG with tears in his eyes, and so he was soon able to sign a contract with YG, in which many hip-hop groups worked. After becoming a YG trainee, he had to do every chore for a year, such as cleaning the practice room and running errands for seniors. Mm. So that was his schedule at that point. When he got to the studio he had to clean before and after the practice, this took about an hour and in between, he could practice for an hour or two before going home. Although he was responsible for all these duties alone, he did not neglect the training. And by the time he was approaching 14, he was also able to take part in a few songs of YG seniors, and therefore gain stage experience in the process. <laughs> One day he met his new friend at YG, and that was Taeyong. GD and Taeyong, who were the same age, naturally got closer to each other, and they dreamed of having their debut while being trainees. But it wasn't that easy going someone may think, because both of them not only had to carry out their trainee lives but also their school lives. Lives. GD hated prejudice such as, singers are empty-headed. That's why GD thought that, I should try my best in school just as I work hard as a trainee, and so did Yang Hen Suk. In fact back then, Yang Hen Suk wouldn't even let them train if they didn't score more than 80 points on school tests, so Ooh, GD had yeah. no choice but to work hard as a student and trainee. Also, GD had to go through a lot of hard things before his debut. GD and Taeyong were also backup dancers, in case other dancers dropped out. And although they were only trainees they didn't get much help from the agency. As example, when they went to a concert, they had to go via subway with a huge suitcase. And after their stage performance, they had to go home all by themselves mixed up with the audience who enjoyed that concert. Because being a trainee was so hard, GD vowed to be successful no matter what. Smart. Meanwhile, in Don't YG at the it. time, there was a system called the indifference system that allowed trainees to develop their skills on their own. Through this system, the trainees had to be assessed once a week without extra lessons in singing or choreography. So as the time passed, one trainee after another started to disappear. In this tough trainee environment, GD and Taeyong worked hard for six years to get their debut, and it paid off as YG gradually started talking to them about their debut. However, the company's plan was very different from GD's wishes. Because GD thought they would debut as a hip-hop duo, but the company planned to make them idols. He was very shocked that he would debut as an idol. He wanted to show his own music to people for a long time, that's why debuting as idols who wear the same clothes and make the same choreography, was like a death sentence for him. He said he didn't work hard for six years to end up debuting as just an idol, but YG Entertainment was too powerful. That's how GD met the four new members who would later debut as Big Bang. After one and a half years of preparation, YG introduced the six idols to the world under the name Big Bang. But in reality, it wasn't an official debut but a survival program called Real Documentary Big Bang. Even though that? GD went through all kinds of hardships for six years at YG, Yang Hen Suk sent him to a survival program. At that time, Yang Hen Suk put enormous pressure on GD with words like, Quan Ji Yang, after six years of training, do you really just want to go home? Like this, Yang Hen Suk kept putting pressure on GD until he finally made his debut. It may have been tough, but thanks to that hard training, we know GD for who he is. In fact, GD was one of the few idols who was able to write his own songs precisely, because YG regularly gave him homework for a long time. That homework was composing, and he's been doing it since the middle school. In one year, he had to write a song per week, then one every three days, and eventually, later he could write one song per day. 
Writing songs so regularly for this long time became a natural thing for GD just like eating. This was for sure a really hard time at YG, but necessary to process until the current GD was born. In 2006, GD finished 5 years of a trainee in SM, 6 years in YG so 11 years in total, before being able to stand as the leader of Big Bang in public. However at that time Ballad was very popular in Korea, and big idols like TVXQ and Super Junior already dominated the idol market. Hmm, so, Big Bang didn't get as much attention as expected for the time being. One day, GD sent Yang Hen Suk, a solo song that he had been preparing for a long time, and just five minutes after sending it, GD received a call. Guan Ji Yang, I'm really sorry but this is the perfect title song for Big Bang, not for your solo. Mm. GD was devastated, he couldn't even cry anymore. YG Entertainment had promised him for many years that he could release a solo album, and he thought this was the perfect opportunity. But instead he was disappointed again, and wondered how many years he would have to wait for it. Nevertheless, the 20-year-old GD had no choice, but to give up his solo song for the benefit of the group Big Bang. However nobody realized at that time, how much this decision would affect not only GD itself, Big Bang but the world. The title track of Big Bang's second album Lies released in 2007, shook the whole Korea. Back then Ballad was still mainstream in Korea, but Big Bang song changed everything. In the karaoke bars from then on, all the students who didn't even know English sang, I'm sorry but I love you. And Big Bang received a lot of affection with it. Big Bang swept all kinds of music charts in Korea, but GD didn't stop here, and just three months later they released Last Farewell to lead the charts again. And this brought Big Bang, the second year in a row since its debut, to the top. In this process, GD once said in an interview that he lost up to 55 kilograms because he couldn't sleep while writing new songs. With a faint smile, he said that the secret of his diet was the pain of creation, and he continued to release another song, Haru Haru, making 2008 the year of Big Bang, awesome. just like 2007. <laughs> However, he did not stop and made a remake from the song Sunset Glow to target more fans. The original masterpiece Sunset Glow has been remade by numerous singers, but the song created by GD was the most popular and loved by all ages. In this way, Big Bang left its name as a group that made a big mark in the K-pop scene in the late 2000s. And YG, one of the many agencies won the title of the top three agencies after Big Bang. At one time, 80% of YG's total income came from Big Bang, and the Big Bang members' military enlistment was considered 80%. the biggest risk for YG. And at the center of all this success was GD who created three of the four hit songs. Wow. But with constant success, stress and pressure, it came as it had to come, depression set in. One of the reasons was that some Korean netizens criticized him severely, stating that most of his songs were plagiarism. In addition, since his debut, he has never been able to rest properly, and the constant working process also on his solo album was a great burden to him. Even Yang Hen Suk, known for being strict, admitted, GD's depression symptoms are deeper than expected. When I saw how he was suffering, I was very sorry for everything. So GD stopped all his activities, including his solo album, for a while. Fortunately, GD who had a month-long break, was able to regain its former brightness and prepared for his coming solo album. Since it was his long-awaited first solo album after all the hardships, he expressed all his emotions in the lyrics and also the depression he was struggling with. Here are some of the lyrics of the song Gossip Man. In addition to writing and composing the album, he was also involved in all the other work related to it, like the choice of the color, costumes, and much more, and this album was also a great success. Not a surprise. Even after 2007, 2008 and 2009, GD's voice still echoed in the streets of Korea. But why did some Koreans hate him so much back then? Was it because people couldn't accept that a 20-year-old boy, who debuted less than three years ago wrote and composed a string of national hits? Or because people didn't want to accept his success? 
or because people didn't want to accept his success? His first solo album in a decade was a huge success, but the public criticism was also heavy. Many people suspected he had plagiarized most of his hits. And after Heartbreaker, people were convinced he had plagiarized American hip-hop artist, Flo Rita's Right Round. Of course after some time, even the artist Flo Rida himself stated officially that GD did not plagiarize. Oh, that's cool. But until this, he had to face constant harsh criticism. Actually, one month after the release of Heartbreaker, there was a poll with 15,000 people, asking who do you think is the singer that is the most overrated? And GD was voted with a staggering 8,000 votes. What? Nevertheless, he was busy preparing for his first solo concert. Since this was the first solo concert under his name, he gave his best, and the concert was so perfect that even he himself said, I have no regrets. But the very next day, criticism was pouring down on him over the internet. With the song Breathe, he wanted to portray himself, a GD who didn't want to wake up from a dream anymore. However, many media outlets misrepresented the performance, accusing him of portraying sexual representation. Of course, the media preferred the fact that the majority of fans present at the concert were teenagers, as the main reason for the harsh criticism. Although he portrayed aspects of happiness and coolness during his performance, the media only reported things that could create headlines. After reading these articles, he thought to himself, am I destined to be cursed no matter what I do? At the same time, fiercely hateful anti-fans launched a call for signatures for GD's resignation from Big Bang, without any reason, going so far as to even launch a campaign for him to commit suicide. Even more cruel things were demanded, which I don't want to mention here out of respect for GD. Now 22 years old GD had worked harder than anyone for his dream, yet the public found harsh criticism, some even going so far as to call for his death. All of this caused his depression to flare up again. At some point, he came to the conclusion that he couldn't do anything right, because no matter how hard he worked, he was always portrayed as a criminal in the end. At that time he gave an interview once, and it was really sad to listen to his heartbroken words. While others sleep, I write songs, so I hardly sleep. I wonder why some people hate me so much. I'm still young, and I get hurt a lot. I'm doing my best, so I hope you guys like me at least a little bit. Despite this heartbreaking interview, the attacks didn't stop. In July 2011, a shocking article was published about him, accusing him of smoking weed. And here's what happened. After the concert in Japan, GD was drunk at the after party. Someone there gave him a cigarette, so he smoked it, and that was the problem. He was suspended from the charge because he was drunk at the time and admitted it was his fault. In some countries the use of drugs is punished more severely, and GD was also an idol of teenagers and a symbol of the music industry in Korea at that time. So because of these incidents, the national criticism of him was even harsher, and the media slagged him. Of course, the case cleared up after the circumstances were clarified, and the criticism of him also subsided. But he suffered greatly during this time, later he said, I didn't think that I could do music and broadcasting for much longer. A year after the incident, he returned with his new album One of a Kind, and of course the lyrics reflected his feelings. Here are some of the lyrics of the song One of a Kind. Of course, despite public criticism, he never stopped delivering the message he wanted. In 2014, there was an incident at the Mnet Asian Music Awards, MAMA. At the time, GD was invited to perform at the MAMA Awards. GD took the opportunity on stage and showed everyone the real background of the MAMA Awards, because it wasn't about talented artists but only about popularity. Thus, the MAMA Awards were lacking in their meaningfulness. At the same time, his outstanding fashion sense was discovered, and he was invited to numerous fashion shows including Chanel. Chanel even later named him Chanel's Global Ambassador. <laughs> From that point on, GD was labeled as a celebrity and artist beyond a musician. But behind all of GD's fame, there was terrible loneliness that people couldn't see. Then in 2015, his lyrics reflected that loneliness. These are the lyrics of the song Loser. 
From then on, GD gradually began to explore the other side of his great life. After the album's release, he began to expand his career beyond music into art. At the Seoul Museum of Art, he prepared a special exhibition called Peace Minus One Beyond the Stage. But this time he was criticized again, and this time it was the art world. Media started to publish the negative articles about GD. It's a huge product wrapped in art. Public art museums have been mobilized for the strategy of entertainment agencies. What's the point of being inundated with female fans in the art museum, who relegate art to a supporting role? Like in Korean idiom states, back then GD was criticized so much that someone could have said, he was even criticized for breathing. People thought everything was fine with him, because they only saw the powerful and charismatic GD on screen, but it wasn't like that at all. Because behind all the GD facade, there was still a normal human named Gwon Ji Young. As in 2015, Big Bang's 340-day world tour began, GD also celebrated the 10th anniversary of his debut. But the hard times he'd been through, all the harsh criticism that haunted him no matter how hard he tried, had already turned him into a human wreck. During a concert, after finishing his part he simply collapsed backstage. And even in this state, he kept pulling himself together and dutifully completing his role on stage, and such breakdowns were repeated several times. These breakdowns was also due to the murderous schedule of the concerts that continued without a break. But neither his tens of thousands of fans who attended the concerts, nor the members of Big Bang were aware of his situation. As the leader of the group, GD had to keep his composure and preserve the facade. At the same time, however, his depression increased. 30 years old, and he prepared his second solo concert in four years with his second solo album. And he showed his feeling again through his song. Next is an excerpt from the song Superstar. Even in the music video, Guan Ji Yang now ditched all the glitter and just performed as himself only with a piano. He started his world tour shortly after the album's release, but he said worrying things at his concerts in Korea. Also during this world tour, he gave a deeper feeling about himself in an interview in Japan. The following is a summary of what he said in his Korean concerts and interviews in Japan. Thanks to you, I'm having a great day. Living like this has been my dream since childhood, it feels good to live in this dream. But sometimes I'm not sure if it's a dream or reality. There are many times when I get confused between reality and dream. I had to go through everything even the bad experiences, but I had only great experience and a good life as a musician. I think that's why I'm going crazy. I'm lonely. I'm very lonely. Life is just so lonely. I'm in the spotlight but I feel so lonely. A few days ago, I was looking for a way to relieve stress and I wrote a letter to myself. I'll read it for you. You're doing great, everything's gonna to be fine, you'll make it. But you should take a rest too, live for you. The world doesn't collapse just because you're not there. Look at the nature, humans are really small beings. Don't overreact, let's just hang in there this year. After the four month of his world tour, he suddenly turned on his Instagram live streaming. His fans were very surprised, because he wasn't the person who loved to do live streamings. And GD said, I came to my house in Korea, after a long time after the concert, but there was no one. And I was so lonely, that's why I turned on the live streaming. And the fans who watched the live said this. At the time, GD looked really lonely and anxious. It was really sad to hear that he turned on the live stream on Instagram, because he was feeling lonely even though he was not the live streaming person. At this point, earning money was no longer the main point for him, as the annual copyright fee he is receiving was already over $1 million per year. Ooh, when he turned wow. 31, he joined the military, but things didn't go smoothly here either. During his military service, he was transferred to a military hospital for ankle treatment. But one soldier recorded everything about GD's tattoos, even his underwear size, and the so-called GD observation diary was posted online. This incident was a massive invasion of privacy and a stalking crime, resulting in severe criticism of the soldier and military force in question. Dang. As a superstar, he had to satisfy the public's wishes. 
But at the same time, his private life was massively invaded, making a normal life almost impossible. After his discharge from the military, he worked with Nike. But apart from his fashion business, there was no news about him for a long time. Of course after Sun Lee was involved in burning Sungate, many people used to say that Big Bang would retire itself. Fortunately however, GD returned in April 2022, for the first time in four years with their new song Still Life with Big Bang. Despite being the first album in four years, Still Life has racked up more than 30 million views in just three days since its release, Crazy showing that so many people right. are still waiting for it. Even as many people criticized GD, his fans who supported him always said, seeing GD reminds me of the saying that geniuses are short-lived. Like the stars we've lost before, it makes me feel terrified that he's going to leave us overnight. I hope he stays strong for a long time. In an interview nine years earlier, he spoke about his plans for retirement. He said that he was on stage because he wanted to bring good energy to the audience, and when he couldn't emit good energy anymore, he would leave without regret. So it's hard for his longtime fans to say he should come back without a guilty conscience. Because they are aware of how long he's been working hard, and how much he suffered. During the preparation for this video, I only was wishing for him the best and wanted to say, I wish you could be our star again, but what's more important is that you're happy, even if it means you're not coming back to us anymore. The video ends with the sincere hope that the human Guanji Yang will be happy. Okay, so we just got done with this little documentary on GD. Um, I, I do want to make a, little, a few statements before um, ending, and that is, of course, um, you know, when it comes to people like GD, you know, I feel like that <laughs> that because he has endured so much crazy, like, abuse from the media and stuff like that, and other people that it kind of made me think about a little bit and uh, and I know this sounds really weird but he kind of almost reminds me of like a modern day Mozart right um started out young and you know there are claims that there's a lot of people who um didn't quite like what he was doing <laughs> now of course, a lot of people would probably think of Salieri, but that's actually neither here nor there. That's might actually be proven to be false, maybe. But um, there was a lot of people that didn't really want him to be successful. And, you know, <clears throat> he faced a lot of very similar things. And it's actually kind of interesting because, like, you could almost say in a sense that he is like a modern day Korean version of Mozart in a lot of ways. Being able to compose a song every single day. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> um, two, I think the other thing that, um, you know, I think this is just a, I think just personal observation is that usually when people treat someone so horrifically, they almost, it's because they're jealous. <laughs> they're jealous. They can't accept that it's uh, him and not them. And, you know, jealousy can push people in a, in a terrible way. Um, yeah, that really actually frustrates me. Because I think that um, for someone who's just trying to do what he wants to do in life, to do that is pretty unreasonable. Um, and look, there... The claims of plagiarism as well, I wanted to tackle, tackle as well. It's hard to say anything is unique, you know. Um, you could point out just about anything and match something to it and say that, you know, oh, this person plagiarized this, that person plagiarized that. You could, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's plagiarism. Um, you know, there's a very big difference. And again, that just sounds like it's coming from a place of, uh, people who just are jealous and have no compassion in all honesty. Um, you know, I think it's a, kind of interesting when I do these videos because like, 
I think it's kind of fair to say that there has been some dark sides to K-pop. And um, I think that sometimes being able to address it is good. And I think this is a video that highlights kind of some of the stuff that even, you know, it shouldn't be as accepted as it is or was. Um, so, in any case, the, the last thing that I wanted to tackle before we got on to just ending this video was um, <clears throat> the prospect of musicians dying young. Now, look, I have always been a metal, been a metalhead, and many people know this. And the the truth of the matter is, is that inside of my in the genre of metal, that kind of thing is very common, and inside of rock as well. I mean, one of the most popular, obviously, being Kurt Cobain. Um. So, I mean, there's lots. I mean, you can say Cliff Burton from Metallica, even though, you know, that was a little bit of a different circumstance. You can even say the drummer from um, the Foo Fighters. You can say the lead singer of, um, of Typo Negative. You, there's tons of examples. Obviously, like uh, the guitarist from Pantera. You could see, say even, there's, it's countless. It's countless inside of the world of metal. And I think the thing that really sucks about this is when you get into um, a lot of the nitty gritty, a lot of these people that die young uh, generally is due to, at uh, least in the world of metal, is generally due to depression, alcohol, and drugs. And it's not everybody, but, you know, there's a lot of it. And so when they started bringing this up and I was just like, yikes you know what i'm saying so sorry this is a little bit of a heavier video but uh i wanted to do something different and i think this is kind of a unique way to do the uh um spring break away from k-pop <laughs> so um i'm gonna leave a yeah i'm gonna leave it here so in any case thank you all for um watching and i hope that you had a, as much fun as i did and learning about gd so Anyway, have a good one, guys. Thank you.